Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Today is a little bit different. We are bringing back in a guest due to some uh, audio issues on our part. Uh, so we are bringing back in Calgary City Council candidate for Ward 5. Just making sure I got that right. And he is nodding. As you can see, he is in studio this time. Aaron Sadat. Aaron, thank you so much for doing this. A very good afternoon to you. And thanks, Chris, for having me here today. No, no worries. So uh, as, uh, as always, like we said, uh, we're going to be doing the interview all over again so hopefully you have some better answers if not some some more some more concise answers for us because i want to make sure that we do the exact same interview as best as possible okay i promise to do my best awesome so my first question as always sense of duty to serve where does that for you come from well uh uh, well, I do want to start by, as you mentioned, my name is Aryan Sadat. I'm the council candidate for Ward 5. The sense of duty, it started uh, over almost a decade or so. I started uh, involved, getting myself involved with different organizations, uh, mosques, uh, uh, organi organizations helping in and did some charity uh, fundraising as well and then when I see uh, and I was raised in this world as well when I look at the issues uh, that's when I'm like you know what it's better to why don't I put my skills now on the table and see if we can serve the fellow Calgarians so that, that gives a good segue into the first line of questions is why politics? I know you did run in the last uh, general election in 2017, but why put your name forward again? What is it about 2021 that made you think, you know what, I want to put my name in because I have something to give? That's interesting. Uh question and answering your question I'll be saying that uh, when I ran last time I saw that I felt that Calgary Ward 5 has been neglected on a municipal level so taking that into consideration I, was, I put my name forward I came second in the last election 2017 and uh, <clears throat> Now we're back in 2021 and I see the issues still exist. Those are my plans that I wanted to implement and still we're having issues. So that's why I came back and I said, you know what, uh, I don't want to give up and I want to make some changes. So what are those issues that you're talking about? Because while your issues might be different from your neighbors or from someone in Falcon Ridge to compared to Saddle Ridge. So what are the issues that you saw that were being neglected in Ward 5? One of the major issues, I believe, at Calgary Ward 5 that uh, been neglected consultation and transparency and that is to do we start with uh, the flyover bridge in Teradil. Uh, I was approached by those residents and have asked me to put my name forward because there's lack of uh, representation and uh, th the bridge was approved without even them knowing and they received a, a letter saying that it's approved. So that's one. Another part of issues that I was contacted, a lot of cr cr crime activity is growing in Ward 5, uh, especially in Northeast as well. And one of my agenda in 2017 was to combat the illegal activity that's on the rise in Calgary Ward 5. So that was another crime and another concern that uh, issues was with respect to the traffic, uh, reckless driving, speeding, lack of signs, crosswalks, and people not feeling safe. And of course, uh, other issues such as snow plowing is a major concern issues for a lot of residents. Uh, and then, of course, when you ask me more questions, I'll get dig into more in detail. Well, I, I love talk, talking policy. As you remember from our last interview, I love talking policy. And policy is one of those things that we we need to get into because we are electing a slate of canned councillors who are going to be put implementing policy that is going to hopefully be b the best for all Calgarians. So I, I want to start off with this question because you, you talked about crime and you talked about uh, uh, policing in some sense, and especially in Ward 5 and a little bit of Ward 10, because like you know, you I'm re relatively close to your ward with the hop, skip and jump. I'm in Ward 5. How do you envision working with Calgary Police Services to better serve our community members so that way we have uh adequate policing but also we feel safe in our in our own households i'm glad you brought this question and uh, i would love to put my input with respect to that uh, i do want to make this clear that calgary police is doing an amazing job for calgarians so uh, let's not discount that but at the same time i believe we need improvements with calgary police and uh, with respect to calgary ward 5 it's uh, one of the most diverse ward in calgary so we have people from different backgrounds 
background, different uh, ethnicity that comes. And unfortunately, the relationship or the police services that are in those countries are not the same that it should be accountable here, like Calgary. So the relationship is, I think it's a lack of uh, good relationship between the police and the residents. And it's, it's just lack of education, I believe, and lack of understanding of new environment. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that the police are getting more engaged and providing more resources to Calgary police so they can contact and talk to newcomers associations uh, and also the organizations and a lot of uh, well, we're fortunate that we have a lot of organization that works with different backgrounds so to help and break bring the gap and also with respect to crime I believe uh, I will be when elected on October 18 I'll be advocating towards having school resource officers because the crime rate in Calgary Ward 5 especially is on the rise. We see a lot of drug abuse, uh, drug um gang activities and illegal activity that's happening in Ward uh, 5. So those are my plan and I believe that when we have a resource officers we need to start from the bottom. By that I mean uh, junior high, eh, grade 9 to grade 12. That's when we provide uh, programs, uh, sports activities, uh, introduction between the police and see what we can do to build the relationship. And on last point I do want to mention it's unfortunate that uh, most of the residents when I talk to them at the doors what they mention is that, look, if we see a police officers, even if we don't do anything wrong, we end up doing something wrong. But I want to tell those listeners that, look, police is there to protect us, to serve us. We, the issue, what I see is that we need to provide more resources to Calgary police so they can actually advocate and build up that gap between the residents and the newcomers, especially in Ward 5. You, you mentioned it briefly there a few seconds ago, but I want to touch on it a little bit because Ward 5 and a little bit of Ward 10 is one of the most diverse commu- parts of the city. We have recently, and we did not talk about this in our first interview, but I want to make sure that I do mention it, that we have seen the rise of hate crime towards election signs, towards uh, people of color, people, uh, black, indigenous people. Um, we are a very welcoming city. How do we combat racism in today's society, especially when you see attacks on because I saw that you posted uh, that someone had posted something on your side. How do we fight back and say enough is enough. We are not this type of city. Let's uh, this is what uh, I'm glad that you brought this also into this interview, because, yes, I was a victim of a vandal. My signs were vandalized and also there was uh, a racist slur, a racial slur on the sign as well. But I want to make one thing clear. Calgary Ward 5, that's very odd incident in my view. That's not what the representation of Calgary Ward 5 will be. Uh, On that note, I do want to mention also that racism exists. So we need, as a community, come together, stand tall against any sort of uh, uh, racism, regardless of race, gender, color, religion. And with respect to how can we combat that, I'm pretty sure working together. And then, for example, I reported the incident to the Calgary police. And as I mentioned, it's an odd incident. Let's hope that's not continuing. And it's very unfortunate that it's only happening during election time, especially on election <laughs> sites. So I hope that stops. And let's uh, that's not something that's going to stop me from moving forward forward. However, when elected, we will be looking into this as well to see what we can do to deal with Calgary Police Aid Crime Units as well, to see bring policies or agendas, to see how can we combat those uh, issues. We, we talk about diversity a little bit here, uh, as you just mentioned. Um, but we're speaking in English right now. Yes. Ward 5 is not majority English. And I, I mean that with all respect, because it's great that we have such a diverse community. How do you envision yourself connecting with all people of Ward 5, not just the people that you can speak to, but everyone who, who don't vote for you, who vote for you, but also who may not be able to speak the language you're speaking? Well, uh as you said, uh, English is the language. Of course, that's our official language. But at the same time, I do want to mention to your listeners that I do agree with you that it's a diverse uh, word. I speak almost six languages. So I speak uh, Urdu, Hindi, Pashto, 
Dari, Persian, and I also understand Punjabi as well. So I think it's it's giving me a good uh, push up. Even though when I practice law as a lawyer, <laughs> it's uh, when my clients come as soon as they find out that I can speak their language, they just go on that. So I think uh, understanding and also having facilitating such assistance to multi language, uh, we can speak different languages. It will be helpful for us. For example, the majority of Ward Five is uh, South Asian people from India and Pakistan and uh, the language is kind of similar so we will be able to get through that uh, with me and hopefully I'll see what I can do down there when we deal with them. We are living in a unknown certainty right now with the pandemic. Uh, we are potentially heading into a fourth wave. All reports say that we're heading into a fourth wave. People want to get back to normal. People want normality. They want to go back to 2019 when things seem to be a little bit more easygoing. Northeast Calgary has been the hardest hit due to the pandemic. The numbers were high. We are living in a area that families congregate. Families are in the house. How do we ensure that our elected officials, and you as the next uh, councillor for Ward 5, ensure that everyone who was affected by this pandemic and those who weren't get ahead, get a hand from the city government, are able to work together to move forward and not become homeless because we have people who are close to becoming homeless. We are people living paycheck to paycheck. We need Uh, We need a silver lining here. And how will you help the people of Ward 5 get ahead? Well, uh, I'm glad you brought this up again. And it's a very interesting topic. And I can tell you from my experience, when I deal with my clients, I deal with a lot of clients that are losing their business. I mean, as a result of uh, COVID, the restaurants, their small businesses. That's as a result of that, I put on my platform that we need to provide some sort of uh, home-based business support for these individuals because a lot of businesses lost their business, but they want to do something from their home. So we need to cut the red tapes or cut the administration fees or do whatever we can to, so at least when they lost, it's unfortunate that they lost their uh, business, but let's see what we can do to, at least so they can pay their mortgages, as you mentioned, at least so they can feed themselves for next uh, week or so, I mean, until the next paycheck. But at the same time, I think uh, council uh, needs to pay more attention to a situation like this in future. And I'll be advocating for that in terms of whatever support that's needed. As you mentioned, Calgary Ward 5 residents, and I want to make sure Ward 10 as well, because <laughs> you're going <laughs> to, you know, I don't want you to think, but I'm running in five, so I can only speak for five. So I'm going to go back to Calgary Ward 5 residents. They're hardworking people. Most of them are the, the truck drivers, That was some that drive trucks, some drive taxis. Taxi, they, they're hard because they want to feed their kids, their children, go to school, all that. So that's why maybe as a result, it was uh, the incident. I mean, the rates were high, the cases for COVID. However, if we had support for them, proper support and proper uh, plan in place, it would have been much better. And I'm glad now that hopefully the new council will come together and then learn from our mistakes and not our mistakes because I was in a previous council. <laughs> I mean, learn from their mistakes so we can go and get a plan in place like not only I want to sorry if I'm going sidetrack a little bit it's not only for COVID we need to prepare ourselves for any unforeseen circumstances like we got we were hit with hailstorm as well nothing happened we had to wait for the election so then some people make their name and say that we're giving you some sort of incentive but let's you know I, I don't think I think that we should put the needs and necessity of Ward 5 residents for those, anyone who wants to put their name forward on the table and fellow Calgarians to help them. Why do you think you're the best person to help them, though? Because it's great that you can come up with policies. It's great that you can talk uh, the way that you're talking. But at the end of the day, I, I, I have spoken to account, uh, people in Ward 5. I've spoken to people across the city. They say politicians say what they want when they're going for an election. But come once they get elected, we never see them until the next election. Why are you different? Sure. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, that's what uh, some, when I put these policies, it just feels like I'm speaking their language. Mm-hmm. I understand. And I t- it took me time. It's not like 
like I just will copy and copy paste from a, a website to say I want to make sure I put these policies. We actually, my team of uh, a campaign, we actually sat down and did some analysis and why I think uh, I will be the best candidate. Well, first of all, of course, uh, I know Ward 5 is very special to me. I went to school in this ward. I was raised in this ward. I understand the issues that we're facing in Ward 5. And uh, I think uh, my policy speaks for itself why it's the best, why I'm the best. And also, uh, I mean, the best candidate, just want to make sure I make that clear. And, uh, you know, I believe uh, my experience, life experience and me being a lawyer will give us a good boost to be on council and make sure that we stand up for our rights and make sure that we be the voice of uh, residents on council. And my job is to find solution for as a lawyer. And then when I when my clients come to my firm, I call them the bosses. And when I'm at the door, they're my bosses. So that's why I understand uh, the their issues. I speak their language in terms of knowing the issues. That's what I mean. Not the same language. That's what I'm trying to say. And so th those are the reasons. And I believe uh, my communication skills, my understanding and my relationship, building up relationship with different level of government will give me a good boost to be the uh, fit, fit the bill for being the best candidate. We are living in an uncertain world with budgeting, with finances right now. While it's great that you want to come in and say uh, Ward 5 has been neglected, we need to do more for Ward 5, this next budget round is going to be hard. We are in a world where global downturn of oil and gas has uh, decimated the downtown core. Pandemic has hurt our tax base. Sometimes Ward 5 will have to go without and I think I would not be saying this. I would say this to Ward 4 or Ward 3 or Ward 2. You're going to have to say no to some projects that people want. How do you envision doing that? How do you envision working with people and saying, you know what? I would love to be able to advocate for that, but we don't have the money right now. Fair enough. Uh, well, I believe Calgary Ward 5 residents are rational and reasonable people. And they don't, they're not selfish and they want what's best for Calgarians. So in answering when there are decision be making, I want to make this clear that one of my platform is transparency and consultation and accountability. These three parts that comes under one uh, umbrella, I believe. I want to make sure that I consult with my residents and Ward 5 and any votes that I'll be putting forward is it's going to be whatever the voice of Ward 5. However, that's when my skills and my uh, experience as a lawyer comes into play to make sure I make a proper argument for the residents and for Calgarians. And I'll assure you that our ward, as long as we get what's for the best interest of Calgarians, they will agree to move forward. And they will they are reasonable people. They're hardworking people. They understand what the issues. So in answering your question, I want to make this one more time clear. Any votes that I'll be voting on council, I'll make sure that I have consultancy with my residents. And whatever it's there to take, I'll make sure I put that on the table because it's their say. Just because I'm elected, I'm not going to go against that. Excellent. I, I do want to uh, follow up on that because you said you want to hear what the voice of the people of Ward 5 are is. You are canvassing. I know you are canvassing because I follow your social media and you were out there with your team most nights and knocking on doors, talking to people. What are the people telling you? What are the things that they want? I know you said the flyover was a big uh, concern, but what are the things in Ward 5 that you were hearing that you say, you know what, we are missing this. We are missing that. What are the issues that Ward 5 residents face right now? Well... There are a lot of issues, so, <laughs> so, so I can't just say, but... Uh, what are the, the top three? Top three, I would say, uh, especially to do the snow plowing. When it's snow time, <laughs> uh, our streets are just there. We have to wait for the sun to melt it, where southwest, northwest, southeast gets their share. Now, if you tell me that I'm going to be voting for that, that they get their share, but just because they want to, and then we sit there and say no, uh, that's not going to happen. And another major concern is that uh, cr crime. It's unfortunate that Calgary Ward 5 sees an increase of crime, illegal activity. We 
we see domestic abuse, we see substance abuse, we see illegal gang activities in wards, and people are concerned. I was door knocking in one area in Ward 5. One person told me that their car was broken five times in the matter of two months, and that's just insane. And I believe that's because of lack of police presence. Now, same thing again. Now, if we come to vote for that, that we're just going to continue living with that, where other wards gets their share of police uh, patrolling the areas, no, I'll be voting against that because the reason I'm connecting these answers to that. Another concern is even when it's summertime, uh, the roads, the parks, the ponds, the lakes, they, they yellow, dry, what can we, we're paying property taxes. We're being, and I do want to share, because I didn't mention this in the last interview with you. I was actually at someone's house in Skyview, and the lady asked me, hey, I, I heard about you. I know you're a lawyer. Can I talk to you about my issue? I said, sure, but it's not going to be legal advice because I can't represent you and run for the city, right? So I went at the back, and it was really concerning. She said she purchased this property over six or seven years ago. And uh, the builder supposedly, according to her, uh, was she, to she was told that your view is not going to be obstructed and this is just going to be your view. Now, after almost a couple of years, like four or five years, there's a condo townhouses are coming in that which is going to block the old backyard. Oh, wow. And now taking and then the grading is also six feet compared to the backyard. So she contacted the, pre the counselor. So the counselor didn't bother going there. He sent his assistant with city official. And according to her, she said that city official came in and the manager, whoever the person was, said that it's a city mistake. Now the question that's kind of really frustrating us is that city makes, mis makes this mistake. What kind of compensation are we offering for these individuals? Because their property values go went down. And same thing with the bridge as well. Their property, most likely it's gonna go depreciate because of the bridge that's coming, even though it's a, for EMS, but let's call a spade spade, like you know what I mean? It's gonna depreciate their value. So those are the issues that w major concern in Ward 5 was that lack of representation. Uh, people were trying to contact and even though another concern was a lot of people in Skyview, Redstone, Cornerstone and Cityscape is mentioning school. Now I want to be clear, school is a uh, provincial jurisdiction but that does not mean as a counselor I'm going to stay quiet, oh that's not my jurisdiction. Let's have a strong advocacy. Let's see what we can do to get things done. Let's not wait for the provincial government to so it's close to election the same way council is doing so they say hey we're bringing school no, let's make sure we get things done properly because they're not doing us a favor. It's our rights. It, that, that's we pay tax, property taxes, and we pay, we're paying tax, income tax as well. That's for these purposes. So let's make sure that we get what we deserve. How do, I, I'm going I'm to try to word this correctly because I want to make sure it comes off the way that I want it to come off. Things change. Ideas change. That woman, I'm just taking this example because you brought it up, but the example of you were talking to someone in Skyview and their up, their view was going to be obstructed even, to, even though the, the builder said that it wasn't going to. Things do change. How do you envision yourself working with people like that woman to say, okay, yes, we understand that we the builder told you that it was going to be obstructive, but... We're not the builder. We're the city, and the city has the right to zone parcels of parcels of land in accordance to what they see fit. I, I'm thinking of a current park in downtown Calgary that is going from a park to a development zoning. But in your ward, how do you envision saying, okay, while it's great that we can stay stagnant, but we grow, we grow as a city, and we need to change, and things do happen. Communication's great, but at the end of the day, how much communication can you do before you have to make a decision? Because you are the elected official. You can talk to a thousand people. They're going to give you a thousand different answers. Well, as I said uh, earlier, that as long as it's rational and reasonable, I'll be standing for it. And this is rational and reasonable. I didn't make any comment because I don't want it to be a legal advice that, yeah, you can go after the builder. 
But if when the city official comes themselves and says it's a city mistake, that speaks for itself. And yeah. I hope I answered you. No, you did. And, I- and uh, in terms of that, uh, in my view, of course, this is not legal advice. It's, uh, when a city makes mistakes, they should face the consequences, compensate what it, the affected parties are deserve to have. I, I want to talk a little bit about you as the next city councillor for Ward 5. Um, as I just said in my last question to you, you, people will won't vote for you. You will not be. You will not get a hundred percent of the votes because you have other candidates running against you, and that, I would assume that they're going to vote for themselves. So at least at the end of the day, you, the chances of getting ninety nine percent of the vote is that. How do you envision representing? Everyone, because we talked about the diversity. Now let's talk about the people who don't vote for you. How do you represent everyone at City Hall when you're in a such a diverse field of candidates? Uh, <laughs> let me be clear on that. Democracy speaks for itself. Anyone who <laughs> votes, they win. But that does not mean that those who didn't vote for me and I'm going to have a list and I'm just going to not do what they want. When elected majority rules, I'll be Ward 5 residence counselor, not just a counselor for voters of Ari and Sadat. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I answered your question. You, you certainly on that. You did. So uh, you will get opinions brought forward to you. You will get things that you may not agree with. You may not agree with, but your residents want it addressed at council. How do you propose working in that situation? Yet again, you talked about the best idea has to be brought forward. And as long as it's uh, legal, you want to bring it forward because these are the people that you're representing and they are, in your words, your boss. Yes. So if your bosses say, I want a new driveway, I want a new road or sidewalk along my uh, my street because my the current one is completely destroyed. How do you envision working with them and saying, I would love to, but it's not going to be fixed for another 10 years because it's not in the provincial it's not on our budgetary needs right now well fair enough Uh, as i said ward 5 residents are rational and reasonable people and when they bring forward uh, they are the bosses and me i'm just there for four years and then if i need their vote i have to go back and represent them so i'm their voice and if the majority says that this is our voice of course we're going to be doing consultation of course we'll be talking and see what if there's different ways to find solution unfortunately i don't have that in front of me to tell you that yes uh, instead of a we go to b and then try to convince the that let's go do this or that. But in terms of uh, uh, go moving forward, I'll be following uh, the consultation. And uh, if it is, that's what the resident wants, I'll follow their, uh, of course, I have to play my leadership as a uh, campaign uh, sorry i mean as a your role as a counselor as my role as well and and that's what i earlier i was speaking to you then that's what i have the skills and making sure that we make a decision so it's in the best interest of ward five and also calgarians so we will be uh, for me the best interest of calgarians and ward five uh, of course ward five and calgarians will be on the table so if someone is bringing just because uh, they want or they don't like the idea from someone else and they just want to put it there of course course uh, I will listen to it but I'll put my reasoning to that person uh, I want to make sure consultation is on the table because I don't want to come back and say hey uh, this was not consulted with us the same thing that happened with the bridge so yes uh, I will be most likely I'm certain people that I talk to uh, we just care about our share we want to make sure that we our roads are cleaned on time in terms of snow plowing. We want to make sure that we have police presence in the area. We want to cut the crimes. And those are their rights, and I'll never, never compromise with that. And when it's just small matters that you mentioned that someone want to put a yeah. sidewalk, those are, uh, you know, we have to weigh between the priorities and see what's ne- the needs and necessity compares to want. So I'll be working on that. I, I want to talk about a little bit and p- put yourself on October 19th. October 19th, you are the official councillor designate for the uh, Ward 5 of the City of Calgary. What is priority number one for you? Fair enough. Uh, as I mentioned at the doors to the residents, uh, of course, uh, it will be at least a couple of weeks. It takes a week to do the old ceremony, and then it, 
at, it takes at least 30 to 40 days to adjust yourself to the new role and reading resumes, uh, appointing board members, all that. So I'm aware of all those. Uh, the next step I will be doing is that within 60 days, I'll be doing a traffic studies in Ward 5 to see what we can do to make the road safe. Uh, stop sign, crosswalk, lights, yield sign, anything to do to make the road safe for our kids future generation, seniors, residents, and uh, driver to to combat and deal with the reckless driving. The next concern that the uh, next step will be is I want to make sure that I promise the residents uh, this winter we will have clean roads on time with respect to snow plowing. So within six months, uh, the residents will see a major difference in terms of this year. And uh, at least, of course, I cannot guarantee that we're going to do every single road, but I'll assure you that we will do, we'll get our share according to any other words. So I want to make sure I'm clear on that because I don't want someone to come and say, hey, you said that, you didn't do it. But whatever share everyone else getting, we want to make sure we get that. Those seem like very big tasks to get done within the first hundred days or first six months, as you said. Uh, are you up for the challenge? Because I know I'm a former municipal employee. You've probably worked with the city or probably have done business with the city as well. You know that government is not the fastest thing in the world. And I think I think anyone who's listening to this knows the fact that government can sometimes move at a slow pace. How do you envision working in a bureaucracy that sometimes doesn't move as fast as citizens might want? Well, uh, of course, I'm not on the other side of the table. And then whatever we can to manage it and do a pushback, why not? I'll be working on that and see as long as they're doing their job. And I understand, as you said, you're a municipal, you were a municipal worker. So you understand that they're bureaucrats, their channels to be followed and rules to be followed. Uh, as long as we are within the rules, I have no problem with that. And the residents will understand that as well. But let's be clear. If... Another word, Southwest, Southeast, Northwest gets their share, but ours is waiting because we have to wait for the bureaucrats. Uh, excuse me, that's not happening. I, I just want to clarify something because you've said it a few times and I want to make sure that the listeners and the viewers are uh, 100% certain of what you mean. You are one vote on council of 15. One vote. You have to get seven other or eight other people to vote with you or against you on a certain issue if you don't want it to pass or you want it to pass. How do you envision working with your fellow counselors when they're only advocating for their wards and you want to advocate for your ward and balancing that because they'll say, well, it's great that you want something in Ward 5, but Ward 4 needs something a little bit better because I've talked to count candidates across this riding and it seems to be the one thing that comes up. My ward has been left behind. My ward has been left behind. Well, if all wards have been left behind, this next four years is going to be fun when try people try to get things done. How do you envision working with your fellow counselors? Well, let me put it this way. Anyone who put their name forward for uh, counselor, they want the best interest of Calcareans, mm -hmm. in my view, because you want to serve. It's not about publicity stunt, it's about serving. And I'll assure you that so far I have a really good relationship with at least six or seven uh, potential counselors that we're going to be working together to make sure. Of course, I'm not endorsing anyone, but I'm just saying that I have good relationship and it all comes to a teamwork. Uh, of course, it's a give and take they have and of course we're not going to get 100% of what we want and same thing goes for them so we need to find a common ground for all counselors so we have a better understanding to move forward for the next four years so I believe in uh, teamwork I believe having better understanding and communication skills and I believe in uh, uh, everyone uh, fair share fair deal for everyone and I think those are reasonable and even when we put it on the table and those elected officials that's going to be across with me and I don't think I'm asking for the sky sky I know sky is the limit but if I'm just asking that and they're asking something of course we have to compromise on common ground as I mentioned other than that uh, we should be good uh, I'm confident that I have really good relationship with 
potential councillors that's going to come, and also with provincial government and federal government that I'll be building and advocating for stuff that's not even part of our plan uh, jurisdiction. So I'll be doing everything in my level best to get those things done and talk to the stakeholders and also other associations and communities to see what are the needs and necessity. As long as the other councillors are working on the needs and necessities of Calgarians, I'm on side with them. Um, I want to take a moment and give, get you to look right at the camera, which you've been doing quite well, actually, during this whole interview, which is quite great because it makes my job a lot easier when I'm going to edit part of this. Um, talk to the camera. Talk to the people who are listening right now. Why should you be the next city councillor for Ward 5? Well, um, I believe uh, I speak the issues. I understand the issues for Ward 5. Ward 5 is special to me. I know where I'm going to take, where I'm going to take Ward 5. I know I'll be making sure that all our voice are heard and make sure that we are the the residents' voice on council and not the council voice on uh, residents. My platform, accountability, affordability, and safer communities speaks for itself. My background, my experience, and practicing lawyer and litigation will give us a good boost to represent us and make sure that our voice is heard and not run over by anyone because we're not just a counselor, but you also will have a counsel, got counsel, a lawyer. <laughs> I can put my lawyer hat on top and make him on my head and make sure that I follow the rules, the bylaws, and a better understanding of so we have a better chance. On October 18, you have a choice to make. Well, last time I said this as well, and I'll say it one more time. You have a choice to vote for your voice. Aryan Sadat, October 18. You also have a chance to vote on advanced voting from 4 to 10. And if you're out of the country, mail in ballot. And if you want to join my team, uh, please visit my website, alexadat.com, or send me an email, info at alexadat.com. Or you can contact me. My number is there as well. And if there's any issues, platforms that's missing, please contact me. Let's talk about it. That's my job. That's the reason I'm going at the doors to hear the issues because I cannot do this by myself. Please vote for me. Arya Sadat for Award 5. Um, thank you for that. Uh, you just basically took my last question out of my mouth because I was going to say, where can people follow you? But uh, <laughs> you you just mentioned it uh, for my listeners and to my viewers. The links to Aaron, Aaron Sadat's uh, website, Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter will be in the show notes. Uh, also below his uh, image, as you see, will be his uh, uh email well, sorry not email address website address so please check it out this is an important election i say this at after every uh, candidate interview but this is an important election get out educate yourself because at the end of the day you need to make the best decision that you believe will be the best decision for this city we have great candidates running across this city all across every ward learn about them go to their websites go to their social media like aaron said reach out ask them questions because at the end of the day we want to make sure that the next council is best prepared and the only way to do that is for us to voice our concerns and our opinions about how we want the city to be run Aaron thank you so much for doing this this thanks has been a pleasure thanks uh, once again thank you for having me and it's, uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to make sure the voice is clear this time I hope I don't have to come for a third time perfect no I saw it the whole time and it was bouncing and it was good and uh, we did a test run beforehand thank you so much, so much. thanks for your listeners as well